Good afternoon. I'm George Latimer, Westchester County Executive, and welcome to our Westchester Weekly Update. Today is Monday, December 11th. I'm joined by Deputy County Executive Ken Jenkins, and we're here to give you a brief report on some of the issues that are at hand in Westchester County. In a few minutes, we're going to introduce our weekly municipal partner, uh, the mayor of the village of Ardsley, Nancy Kabulian, will join us, and we're always happy to talk with the people who are responsible for different villages, towns, and cities all across the county. Uh, Nancy is uh, the mayor of a village of 5,000 people, and uh, we'll give her a more proper introduction in a second. Uh, we'll be happy to hear about uh, what's happening in the village of Ardsley. We're going to give you a quick update on where we are with the county budget. We're going to talk about our parks and health department programs that are coming up as well. This will be a fairly brief report, and, and for those who may follow this, uh, we expect uh, to come back on the air for a signing of the Westchester County budget, which we'll talk about in just a second. But um, we do want to make an announcement that uh, we've already made uh, publicly, but it, it bears repeating again. Both Ken and myself and our executive team uh, are announcing that the Beeline bus system will be fare free beginning this coming Saturday, December 16th. And it's very important to note that this is the second straight holiday season that we've done this. We did this a year ago. We've also made Beeline buses free during the summer months, July and August of this year and the prior year in 2022 as well. To make it free as well as the paratransit system to make it free is very important because we have so many people that rely on this transit system. Some of them use it to get to uh, the, the trains or the subways that get them into New York City. Some of it to get them from their home or their work, a uh, place of business to to another location, point A to point B as I like to call it. Uh, but it's important to understand that we recognize that these are difficult economic times and when we can make it a little easier for people, and we're going to talk about that in the budget in a second, uh, we try to do that. So for those who use the bus system, you will not have to pay Beeline bus fare starting this Saturday, December 16th, and it goes until and including New Year's Day, which is Monday, January 1st. So it's a little over two weeks. It covers the Christmas holiday. Now the bus schedule is different on Sundays and on holidays, so you want to check Check your Beeline bus system as well. If we get any uh, inclement weather, particularly snow, mm -hmm. we have different route changes that exist. So a little bit of homework. Go on our website, westchestergov.com. Look for information on our transportation system, Beeline buses. It'll tell you all about it. But uh, we're going to make sure that everybody knows about this. We're able to do this because of the revenue that we have from other sources and the cost controls that we've had over the course of the year allow us to have enough revenue to forego the fare box. So the money that you put in the fare box over these two weeks that you won't put in the fare box <laughs> is part of what helps run the system. <clears throat> we pay drivers. We have to maintain buses. We have to... Uh, put the proper energy in them. It's all electrified and hybrid system now, but we still have to pay to put uh, electricity in them. And we can absorb that cost without a fare box because of the way we've managed the budget over the course of the year. So we're happy to do it again. It is not automatic that we can do this every year. We kind of keep our fingers crossed as we go through the math. <laughs> and Joan McDonald, our Director of Operations, Emily Saltzman, our Deputy Director of Operations, Larry Sewell, our Budget Director. And we consult with the Board of Legislators who are always advocates for us to uh, suspend fares when we can. But we're happy to make sure you know that announcement beginning uh, this Saturday, December 16th through Monday, January 1st, the B-Line bus system will be free. And we hope that you enjoy the free B <laughs> and uh, make good use of it. If you've got nothing to do some afternoon in the period between Christmas and New Year's, jump on a bus and take a ride. You can, uh, you can exchange uh, transfer buses and go from one end of the county to the other, uh, pack a lunch and see another part of the county. Maybe you'll want to see the village of Ardsley. And so we're happy to introduce the mayor of the village of Arsley, Nancy Kabulian. Uh, the village has about 5,000 residents. It is a village within the town of Greenberg, which has a total of six villages. It's the only town that has that many incorporated entities. But Ardsley is an incorporated entity. It has uh, a village board of trustees headed by a mayor. It has zoning, planning, land use authority. It has responsibility for policing and other basic services. It's also one of the host communities that has managed uh, a migrant placement from New York City. They've done a brilliant job of managing that process. Very tricky, difficult environment. And uh, Mayor Nancy Kabulian and her team have done an excellent job, and we're happy to be their partners. So without any further ado, let me introduce Mayor Nancy Kabulian. Welcome back. We're happy to have you with us, and we wish you a very happy holiday. Thank you. Same to you. Good afternoon. Thank you, County Executive George Latimer and Deputy County Executive Ken Jacobs for having me. Um, I appreciate our partnership in government. 
And just to point out, Ardsley has the 39 bus and the 66 bus that runs through it, and I often take it to both the Hartsdale train station and the Dobbs Ferry train station. So they are great resources. Um, also, we have uh, given the um, asylum seekers at the motel the bus schedules in both English and Spanish, and they have utilized them while they were free earlier in the summer, and I will notify them again for this time during the holiday season. So thank you very much for that. So it's a great resource. Ardsley is a dynamic community that welcomes and respects and encourages the contributions of all people. I am and always have been committed to working towards a future ensuring equity, diversity, and inclusion in all aspects of local government and community life. The village of Ardsley is one of the smallest municipalities in the county, but we have the biggest heart. During my time as mayor, the board has worked to put in place significant initiatives designed to improve the village today and to plan for the future. As mayor, we reestablished the 10-year capital plan, we put in place a comprehensive plan, a master parks and recreation plan, a road repaving and curbing plan, a sewer and stormwater mapping, and um, a maintenance plan. With funding from Senator Cousins and State Assembly Person Shimsky, we are planning to replace all of our playground equipment in Pascone Park to be more inclusive and environmental and replace our bandstand area. We hope to start this project in the spring. We are also working on a marketing and branding initiative. We are also building a new highway garage. I'm excited about this project. Everyone knows that our highway department works so hard and in many times are really part of the first responder crews going out in an emergency. And in Ardsley, they've gone, gone on way too long without a proper facility. In addition, it was important to me that the village address climate change. As mayor, we reconstituted the Climate Advisory Committee. In 2021, the village earned its first certification as a climate smart community. The village was recently honored by the Hudson Valley Regional Council for its collaborative work with the other river towns. We are excited to be able to submit an application for the level two EV charging stations through the county's municipal infrastructure improvement initiative. Thank you very much to the county executive and deputy county executive for that. Ardsley was one of the very few municipalities nationwide in 2022 to earn the leadership circle from the National Wildlife Foundation for the Mayor's Monarch Pledge. We also have a growing downtown area with lots of good businesses from physical fitness to music to a great new coffee shop and lots of great food options with more to come. We recently opened a Thai restaurant and a Szechuan restaurant. We have a ramen noodle restaurant coming and a Jewish deli. We're excited to have a very diverse group of restaurants in the village and we hope everyone comes down to enjoy the food there. And this year, as the county executive mentioned, we welcomed 73 asylum seekers into one of, my, one of our motels. It was my objective from the beginning that Ardsley be the example for how this country should welcome new Americans to its shores. The outpouring of support from supplies to food, to English lessons, to laundry, to clothing, to coats, to legal help, to medical assistance, assistance from the county has been amazing. There are just some of the efforts of organizations like the River Towns for Refugees, the Dobbs Ferry Food Pantry, St. Barnabas Church, Woodlands Temple, Saint Pres South Presbyterian Church, and the Rivertown Rotary, and hundreds of volunteers. This amazing group hosted a Thanksgiving dinner at the Woodlands Temple, and it was truly amazing. That is what makes Ardsley such a wonderful place to live. No matter our differences, when one of us is in need, we are all there to help. We are truly an amazing community. I want to say a special thank you to Assemblyperson David Imamora who, for his support and leadership with the asylum seekers. He was with me from the first night and has proven to be an invaluable friend and resources. So thank you to the county and thank you to David. I am proud of the village of Ardsley. I am proud of our board of trustees. We have two new trustees this year and I want to thank them for stepping up and for their hard work and dedication. I am proud of and thank all of our employees and everyone who volunteers to make Ardsley a wonderful place to live. I look forward to continuing to work for the village and with the county for the benefit of Ardsley and all the residents of Westchester County. 
Thank you very much for having me. Thank you very much. That's Nancy Kabulian, who is the mayor of the village of Ardsley. Uh, we're very happy to have her with us here, happy as a partner. We were there, uh, I was there last Monday night for the swearing in uh, of herself and her colleagues for a new term, Barry McGoey, who's the newest uh, trustee uh, filling a vacancy and uh, we look forward to working in the future. Um, I want to congratulate uh, David and Mamura for getting a, uh, a battlefield promotion, but we don't want to lose him. He's, <laughs> he's our Westchester County legislator right now, so uh, the assembly may come in the future. But, oh, I'm but sorry. it's okay. <laughs> but for right now, we're very happy to have Mr. Mamura as the county legislator. Mayor Jane Shimsky is a member of the assembly, and Andre Stewart Cousins as the state senator, all representing largely. So, Madam Mayor, thank you again, thank you. And, and our best regards. So, we've got a bunch of things to update. Let's do a couple of the light things, and we'll talk about the budget. Ken is going to cover both uh, a health update and then a parks update, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about where we are with the county budget. Ken? Thanks, George. With flu season officially underway, the Westchester County um, Department of Health will offer free flu shots by appointment this month to encourage residents to stay healthy. So the flu shots are going to be given for ages three and up on December 13th and December, um, December 20th from 2.30 to 6.30 at the community room at the Yonkers Riverfront Front Library. That's at One Larkin Plaza in Yonkers, right across from the train station, the Yonkers train stations. Appointments are highly encouraged and can be made at westchestergov slash health. And that'll be on the bottom of the screen. Walk-ins are going to be accepted while supplies last, but the best way to make sure that you can get your flu shot, like County Executive and myself have done, um, you want to make sure to do an appointment to make sure that you have the opportunity to have a flu appointment, a flu shot um, this year, especially given to this, this particular season. Again, flu shots. COVID shots, and any other vaccinations that you might be eligible for, um, like shingles or something like that, if you happen to be my age or anyone else's age. Um, the flu shots will also be given to residents six months and older at the health department clinics. That's only by appointment. And that's going to be on Thursdays in Yonkers and Fridays in White Plains at the county health department clinics from 8.30 to 4.30 while supplies last. Again, this is appointments are required for those folks six months and older for the uh, for the youth, um, six months to three years old at health department clinics by appointment. And again, you can also find a, a flu shot near you by going to vaccines.gov, and that will show you everywhere you can possibly get a flu vaccination at. In the United States, there are usually more flu cases between December and February, but the flu can last and linger right into May. So one flu vaccine now provides protection all season long and can prevent illnesses. And when you do get um, an illness like the flu, it will reduce greatly the severity of flu symptoms. So again, um, anyone that is in those categories we just mentioned, you want to make sure to get those flu shots, whether it's at your own local provider, whether that's a pharmacy or your, um, your local physician. But for those folks three and, um, and older um, at the, the Yonkers Riverfront Library by appointment, the 13th and de um, December 20th, and for those six months and older, that's for the young children that you can get those at our county health department. And because um, Mayor Kabulian talked about the, the great work and things that are happening uh, throughout the county, but specifically through the village of Ardsley, we have the wonderful South County Trail that goes right through Ardsley, and, and there's some great history that you should take advantage of walking by, see those great markers from the state to talk about the Ardsley Station that was there. And, and again, it's a great opportunity because that's something that happened this year, if I recall correctly, being out there with Mayor Kabulian and her team um, as it was being installed and recognized. Again, so much great history that's in our nationally accredited park system. So we'll go through a few things that we have going on through the rest of the month. Um, tomorrow, December 12th, at the Edith G. Reed Wildlife Sanctuary, right around the corner from County Executive Latimer in Rye, you'll have an opportunity from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. for a photography exhibit at the Edith G. Reed Wildlife Sanctuary. Um, that's 10 to 4 p.m. Um, you'll be able to see this great exhibit that shows the talent and love for wildlife photography, and that exhibit's going to be there on display till January 27th, right at Edith um, Reed Wildlife Sanctuary in Rye. On 
the 14th, December 14th from 10 to 3. Um, we're going to continue the Holidays on the Hill annual train show at Lasden Park and Arboretum up in Katona. You'll get a chance to visit the, um, the, and celebrate the season with iconic immersive exhibits that'll delight children and folks of all ages. Um, visitors will be surrounded by the magic of the season as they stroll by colorful characters and enchanting holiday scenes. You'll have the H-level trains that are there. And right until December 24th, for those interested, you'll get a chance to end that visit with Santa. But after the, um, the 24th, the train show goes on. Santa will have, be going out delivering the gifts around the, the world and doing what um, Santa has to do. Um, so from the 14th right through the 15th, 16th, 17th, and then skips the weekend, and then we get back to the 22nd to the 24th, skipping over Christmas Day itself, the 26th through the 31st for just the train show and also the, um, the characters and smiling colorful characters through the season. That's at Lasden Park and Arboretum. On Sunday, December 17th, the dormant ecosystem exploration, exploration will take place at the Trailside Nature Museum at Wards Pound Ridge Reservation up in Cross River. Um, that's gonna be from 1 to 2 p.m. and that'll give you an opportunity to go on a hike and explore the still water ecosystem across the reservation. Um, Wards Pound Ridge is the largest of the county parks um, and you'll have a great opportunity to, to see that ecosystem, the still winter ecosystem in place to be able to talk about what things are happening in nature. On Sunday the 17th, you can be in White Plains and North White Plains at the Cranberry Lake Preserve, and you can do a chilly hike without going hiking up to Wards Pound Ridge. You can do that right at Cranberry Lake Preserve in North White Plains, and you can take a relaxing hike around a shorter stretch of the preserve before returning to the Nature Center for a nice fire and a cozy conversation that's at Cranberry Lake Preserve. Make sure you sign up for our Parks E-Club weekly newsletter and join the Parks E-Club today and get up to the minute information delivered right to your mailbox. You get some promotions in there as well and some valuable discounts right to your email box. Make sure you sign up today for the Parks E-Club weekly newsletter and we'll turn it back over to, to, to County Executive Latimer. George. Okay. Thank you very much, Ken. This is a brief report today. We're going to touch a little bit on our budget. Uh, with a little more uh, update to follow. First of all, let me make sure we wish everybody who is celebrating a very happy Hanukkah. This is the Festival of Lights. We're in the middle of a number of different nights in which uh, a different candle is lit each of eight lights. So we wish for our Jewish brothers and sisters in a very difficult time uh, as uh, happy uh, a holiday as is uh, possible for them and their families. We're coming on the Christmas season, and very soon we'll be wishing everybody a Merry Christmas. That's still a couple of weeks away. There's a Kwanzaa celebration in our African-American community that follows Christmas in the multiple number of days between Christmas into New Year, and then a New Year celebration, which will take us into the year 2024. And uh, so there's much to celebrate this time of the year. There's a lot to do this time of the year. People are trying to get their uh, world together as we come to the end of the year. And uh, we hope that uh, in whatever the celebrations are that you're looking forward to, that you have a good time with family and friends um, and enjoy every bit of it. One of the uh, year-end celebrations that we have is passing our Westchester County <laughs> budget. As I've mentioned <clears throat> uh, in, in prior weeks, we operate on a fiscal year, calendar year. So our fiscal year begins when the calendar year begins. January 1st goes through December 31st. All of the 19 towns of Westchester County and four of the six cities also operate on a calendar year, fiscal year. Our villages and our school districts operate on a mid-year calendar, a little bit different between both of those levels of government. Federal government operates on an April 1st to March 31st uh, uh, operational time frame. Two cities, White Plains and Yonkers, also have mid-year budgets, so it's a little bit different for a few different levels of government. But for our government, it's a January 1st budget, and we want to have it in place uh, by um, uh, January 1st. And to do so, we present to the Board of Legislators a, um, a capital budget in mid-October and an operating budget no later than November 10th. We met that mark both times. We've done that. This is our uh, sixth year in office, so I guess that's five budgets we've submitted, or six. I have to do the actual counting uh, from 2019 on. But the bottom line is the budget that was submitted to the Board of Legislators we'll talk about in some detail uh, in a little while because the Board of Legislators has passed the county budget by a vote of 14 to 2. There was one absence. 
So we now have a budget in place. Uh, there are no vetoes uh, that uh, will follow, so we'll be able to adopt the budget and then start all the process that's involved. Uh, the budget in some detail, which we'll talk about, is a $2.4 billion budget. That uh, number is a little higher than last year because it reflects the influx of ARPA money from the federal government, which comes in as additional revenue, goes out as additional expenditures, raises the overall cost of the budget, but it is not us generating additional spending. It's because of that ARPA conduit to the greater extent. Uh, we continue to put money into a wide range of initiatives that are important to us. Um, we have funded, obviously, the operating departments of the county government, our parks, our sewage system, sewage treatment system, uh, our public health department, which we've seen up close and personal during COVID, our mental health department, our emergency services, police, corrections, all of those different departments are what is funded in this budget. You'll be able to see an online version of it. There have been some modifications in the budget that's adopted. I intend to sign it when that comes before me a little later today. Uh, and then what's online will reflect those changes once we have a chance to absorb that. So what you're reading today online, if you're going to read it today, um, is the proposed budget and then with modifications that came. The Board of Legislators uh, scrutinized the budget. They had three public hearings. Uh, they went through documents. They made some additions to the budget. They made some subtractions to the budget. They had the benefit of an outside independent auditor from O'Connor Davies that did some assessment that, that gave them advice. And uh, we've worked through all of that process. So we'll be signing the budget today right here uh, at 4 p.m. Uh, and when that goes into effect, uh, we have completed what amounts to the last heavily substantive issue of the day. There's some other issues we're going to be talking about in the days to come. We have some commitments to try to get to some issues on environment and so forth before the end of the year. So uh, we'll be working to, to try to do a few more situations. But it fundamentally ends the sixth year of this administration. Um, uh, two years ago, we were uh, given a second term, which is a total of four more years. So we have two more years left to go under this administration, absent whatever might yet come, some of which may not be uh, uh, visible to us. We do have some good news of something that's coming up at the state level. A state law mobile crisis team it now has flashing green emergency lights that is available to us. And once again, Ken, why don't you cover that piece of information? All right. Thanks, George. As Westchester County's network of mobile um, crisis response teams continues to build and serve communities throughout the county, they and teams around the state will soon have a new tool to help them arrive at behavioral health emergencies faster and more safely. Um, Governor, New York State Governor Kathy Hochul has signed into law new legislation sponsored by our good friend, Senator Pete Harkham, and initiated in Westchester County that will allow the mobile crisis response teams across the state to display flashing green emergency lights in their vehicles when responding to a call. As part of Project Alliance initiated by County Executive Latimer um, two years ago to help deal with the mental health crisis as a response um, to the police reform and reinvention, um, um, initiative, Westchester County deploys mobile crisis response teams throughout the counties in six different regions. They are connected to law enforcement and a crisis network um, phone line that helps serves to divert people in behavioral health crisis to de-escalation and get them the services that they, that they need. This new law will become effective 180 days from the day it was signed by the governor, and it's a very important thing. Again, we'll, we'll get some examples as we're getting towards um, this particular 180 days to see what those green lights will look like so people will not be uh, alarmed when they see them, but that is to be for the mental health behavioral services, and this is another great piece of legislation initiated by our good friend Pete Harkham, Senator Pete Harkham, signed into law by the governor, and that law will be coming into effect, and it's so important for all of us to make sure that we are looking out at the different emergency service providers that are on the roads. Back to you, George. Thanks. So with that bit of good news, we're happy to uh, close off our report today. We thank you for watching. Uh, we intend to be back uh, just in a little while for the formal signing of the budget. We'll have members of the Board of Legislators here as well to share their thoughts about where we are. Uh, the beginning, the budget year beginning is just a beginning. Uh, the opportunity to adjust as, year, as the year goes along and whatever uh, fate holds in store for us. Uh, three years ago, at this point in time, we had no idea that we were going to be facing COVID. And that created a completely different reality for us. And we have to adjust to that. That's our responsibility as, as uh, managers of the government. But uh, we're happy that we're at a point <clears throat> where this, this portion of the year comes to closure. So we'll be back in a little while, I think at 4 o'clock 
to uh, sign the budget. But in the meantime, we thank you for watching. Uh, we wish you uh, a good and safe period of time. And if we don't see you later today for the budget adoption, we'll be back next Monday for another brief update. Happy Hanukkah, uh, a very Merry Christmas, and then we'll get to Kwanzaa in the new year in due time. I'm George Latimer, Westchester County Executive. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.